Hi there. Today we're going to be tying the CDC Damselfly Nymph. This is an excellent pattern to have in your Stillwater fly box. It's got lots of life and lots of movement with the marabou tail and the CDC legs. Um, definite fish catcher. So let's tie one up. Here we have the materials list. Um, everything is all there except for um, you will need a Bic lighter or a barbecue lighter or some type of flame to melt down your mono to create your mono eyes. Otherwise, it's all there on the list. So what you're going to do now is tie on your thread and then tie on a piece of 15 pound model filament. You can use 15 pound or 20 pound or maybe even 10 pound and you're going to tie it on using figure eight turns. Once you've secured it, you can cut down your mono to about a centimeter and a half on each side and then wrap your thread uh, back towards the curve of the hook and then tuck it in on a material clip because when you melt the mono to create your eyes, you don't want to um, burn your thread off. Here we have the mono eyes melted down. You're gonna to wanna to melt these down carefully because if you let it burn too much, it'll burn quick, start catching on fire and burn right to the hook shank. So you wanna burn it little bit by little bit and see if you can get it close to the hook shank by about a millimeter or two millimeters. Um, it's okay if they're a little bit crooked when you're tying on and building your head up later, you can always pull on them a little bit to straighten them out. Now what we're gonna do is take a small pinch of marabou, tie it in just behind the eyes with wraps going towards the curve of the hook to secure it. Now what you're going to do is take that marabou and just pinch it with your fingers and rip it. You're going to want a length of about the shank of the hook. I like to run tails with damselflies a little longer. Um, I just find it it's a good attractor for the fish and it really helps the, the movement and life of the fly in the water. So now we're gonna try and put two steps into one here. So the first step is we're gonna take a piece of copper wire, about three inches long, and we're gonna tie it in just behind the eyes and secure it with wraps going towards the curve of the hook, and then bring your thread up to the front, and then we're gonna take a piece of scud back, about an inch and a half long, and we're gonna tie in one part of it just behind the eyes. Um, you can cut your scud back so it makes a little point so you can secure it, and then you're gonna put a few wraps in there just to tie it down. Now what you're gonna do is pull your scud back forward and take your thread and just do three or four wraps over the scud back just in behind the eye of the hook and just in front of the mono eyes. Do about three or four uh, tight wraps to secure it and then take your thread and wrap it back behind the mono eyes. Now you're gonna take a piece of mallard flank feather and olive and look uh, through your feathers and make sure you get one that's quite long, that has long fibers, and you're gonna tear off about a centimeter of it from the stem. Now you're gonna take your feather and tie it in just behind the eyes and with wraps going towards the curve of the hook and keep it, see if you can tie it up and secure it right close to the tail. And now you're gonna take your piece of mallard flank feather and do clockwise wraps around the shank going up towards the uh, mono eyes and do three or four wraps to secure it down. Now you're gonna take your copper wire and do counterclockwise wraps going towards the mono eyes and then take your thread and do three or four wraps to tighten it down and secure the wire. Okay, now comes the fun part. You're gonna go into your CDC feathers and find a feather that has nice long fibers, equal fibers on each side. They have to be nice and long and kind of balanced on each side. You're then gonna take the feather and you're gonna pull down the long fibers in the middle. They're usually about two thirds up along the stem and pull those down, leaving just the top of the stem and the shorter fibers exposed. From then, you're gonna then clip those ones off and what you'll have is a stem with just the long branch feathers on each side. You're then going to grab the, all those long fibers and pinch them with your thumb and index. So you just have the thick part of the stem, the very bottom of the stem exposed. Then take the stem and line it up right between the mono eyes. The stem can be parallel with the shank of the hook 
and you're just gonna do two or three loose wraps just to hold it in place. You don't wanna tighten it down to secure it just yet. You're then gonna take your stem and start pulling it towards the eye of the hook. As you're pulling it through, you'll see your legs start to splay out and you'll see the, the stem getting shorter and shorter. Once the stem gets close to the thread, you can tie it down with three or four solid wraps to secure it and then pull the feather or the stem back towards the tail and do two or three solid turns, wraps in front of it, uh, just behind the mono eyes to make sure that your stem and your legs are fully secure. At this point, you can adjust the legs. If you find any fibers that are too long or sticking out um, more than they should be, you can just pinch them. Uh, trim, on, trim them if you are gonna trim them, trim them the same length on each side. Um, don't trim them too short. The, one of the beauties of this pattern is the long legs and how they splay out in the water when you're stripping the uh, pattern. So um, it's okay to run them a bit longer and damselflies do have longer legs. So it's, uh, it's good to go on the, the longer side for sure. You're now gonna take your awesome possum dubbing in olive and you're gonna take just small pinches, just enough to cover the thread, maybe three inches down the, uh, down the thread towards your bobbin and you're gonna do figure eight wraps around your eyes and around and a couple wraps around uh, just behind the eye of the hook. And what you're doing here is just building up a small head with your dubbing. The head will look like this and it doesn't take much, it's just a few wraps. You're then gonna take your scud back and pull it over your eyes, over the head you just built and give it three wraps to secure it down and then a nice solid whip finish. Once that's done, you can go in there and cut your thread just underneath the, um, the head there and make sure you don't cut any of your legs off. Okay, you're now gonna take your scud back and pull it towards the eye of the hook. And what you're gonna do here is you're gonna make a 45 degree angle incision on each side of that scud back. A good reference point is the eye of the hook. Um, what you're doing here is you're creating a wing case. You only really got one shot at this, so make sure you take your time and do nice clean cuts, 45 degree angle on each side. Once it's finished, you'll have a short little wing case, then you're gonna flip it back over towards the legs. At this point, you wanna take a little bit of head cement or UV resin and just put a little bit of a coating over your whip finish. That's just gonna keep all your thread and keep everything solid. I like to take a little bit of uh, head cement or hardener and I just go over my head and my eyes just to make that whole upper portion of the fly nice and solid. And that is your CDC Damselfly Nymph. It's an excellent pattern to have, lots of life, lots of movement, marabou and CDC. You can't get more, uh, more moving through the water than that. So definitely uh, tie one up. I've tied them in tan and ginger. Um, you can pretty much any color combination you want, um, whatever your local lakes point out for samples. Um, you can go with make them in larger sizes if you're catching that uh, late spring, early summer uh, damsel migration. Um, great pattern to have. So thanks for watching and tie one up. If you like what you're seeing too, um, please check me out on Instagram at Van Fly Fishing and the YouTube that this video is on. Um, I have a YouTube channel and there's definitely going to be more videos to come. So thank you very much once again and hope to see you on the water.